Hi, in this video we're going to try to review Riemann sums in the trapezoidal method. I'm not going to go through too much theory here. This is just how you do it. Technique, get in and get out. Okay, so what we're going to do are these following questions. First of all, we're going to interpret what this integral means, and then we're going to estimate this integral using Riemann sums with left endpoints, right endpoints, trapezoidal rule, and then also using the midpoint rule. This is the one that's most common that students mess up. So please pay attention why this D is different than C. Now with this first question, they say interpret what the integral from 0 to 15 of the velocity function means. Well, if we do the area under the curve for the velocity function, we end up with what our, in this case, it will be our net distance that we travel over this interval. So if we move left and right, it doesn't matter. It's just starting point minus finishing point. So uh, this isn't going to be in two technical terms. Usually they'll give you a problem where this is a rate. I'm using velocity to just show you how this is work, how this works. However, they'll give you this as any different kind of rate and apply it to the problem. I'm going to leave that up to you. But if we have this, this would be just displacement or net change of our particle or whatever is moving over the interval from t equal to 0 to t equal to 15. Now I should put in the seconds in here. You should put in the seconds. Sometimes the AP people are very particular. And so this is a, di a definite integral. So this would be your um, displacement from t equal to 0 to t equal to 15, or your net change, however you want to look at this. Now it depends what you're looking at, but that's what we, what we have. So definite integral, include the time, and also include the units. Please make sure you do that. OK, now if we go down to these other ones, estimate this integral, what is the displacement, using Riemann sums with left endpoints. And so we're going to do that one first. So if I'm doing the left endpoints, I start with my left endpoint, and I'm going to draw a rectangle here. That would be the area under the curve with the left rectangle using the left endpoint. And then here, I got this one, and then he here to there, and then I got there. Not, I'm not a very straight drawer here. But these are the rectangles that I'm going to get. Okay, notice my last height is the second last term. So these are my left uh, triangles. Sometimes these intervals are all equal. If they're all equal, you can pull out that value and multiply it by everything. But in this case, this 3 is going to be multiplied by the 4, 3 times 4. And then this 2 is going to be multiplied by 10. And then this 2 multiplied by 8, and so on. So if we go back to our worksheet here, with the uh, Riemann sums, like I said, this value right here would be my 3, and I'm going to multiply it by my left endpoint, which is 4. Plus, in this interval, I have a difference of 2, so I'm going to multiply it by the 10, and so on. I'll write these out for you. If we do the right endpoints, we're going to be a little bit different here. We're going to start here and come back. And so I'm going to have this rectangle here, and then this one here, and so on and so forth. So we don't count the first value, and we count the last value. That's how it's a little bit different. So we'll go back here. And so when I start writing these out, my interval here for my time, that's the width of your rectangle. That is still 3. So I'm going to do the 3 here. And instead of multiplying by 4, this time I'm going to multiply by 10. So it's 3 times 10. I'm taking the right endpoint, of, or I'm, so, I'm sorry, the right height on this rectangle for this first interval. For the second interval, so this 2, 2, 3, 2, 3 are all going to be the same. It's just what I put in here are going to be different. So I shift over by 1, and I'm going to have the 4, I'm going to have the 20. And I'm going to have the 25, and I'm going to have the 22. Okay, so that's the Riemann sum. And I notice I'm using six intervals. That's what I have here. Okay, the trapezoidal rule. Now the trapezoidal rule. There's two ways to do this. You can average the left endpoint method and the right endpoint method, and then that would work. 
The other way is to make a trapezoid for each one, which means that you're going to average this 4 and this 10, and then multiply by 3. Then you're going to average the uh, 10 and the 8, and then multiply by 2. Looking at our picture again, we can make these trapezoids right here. My, my pen is not working so good. So here is my trapezoid. Well, how do you find the area of this trapezoid? Well, you take this length and this length, which are the two bases, and you average them, and then multiply by the height. Well, that's just the, the end heights of my uh, interval averaged, and then multiply by that height. So going back to the data, we're going to take, here we have the 4 and the 10. We average those two, and we're going to get 7. So it's going to be 3 times 7. Notice that the 3, the 2, this stuff is going to be the same. Now I average these two, I get 9. I average these two, and I get 6. So the width stays the same. It's just which height am I using for these. And then for this one, it would be 3 times the average of those two. It would be 12. And then I have 2. Average of those two, 45, would be 22.5. And the average of those last two would be 23.5. Now, once again, these are the widths for all of these separate rectangles around these intervals. If, I, if these intervals were consistent all the way through, I can pull that out and just add those up. Now, uh, what happens inside here, though, I did average. So make sure that you know that I added these two and divided by two. The... Uh, we can show you another trapezoid rule with more consistent intervals. This is the one that messes people up. Now, straight away, it says n equal to 3, which is different than the n equal to 6. Why we need that, we need a lot more data because we need to know what the midpoint height is in a certain interval. So if this tells me n is equal to 3, I'm going to have these different intervals here. So, so what's happening on my picture here is that I'm taking this value here and this value here, and what I'm really doing is I'm using this midpoint value as my height. Now, I've made a mistake in this because this is not our midpoint value. I would actually need the exact intervals. So let me change this and get you a new set of data because this is not exactly in the middle. And so I need this point here, not this point here, or whatever the height might be at. So let's look at a different data, and we'll do a trapezoid method off that, too. Okay, here's some other data that I can use to get this done. And so if I look at this, well, now look, I, I have consistent intervals. This is equal to 3, so delta x is equal to 3 on this. So that's my uh, length of my width. And so if I'm doing n equal to 3, however... I'd go 18 minus 0, which would be 18, and divide by 3, which would be 6. So delta x is 6. So what happens now is that when I draw this for the midpoint method, I'm going to get this rectangle. What's the height of that rectangle? Well, if I'm using left endpoint, I got this one. If I'm using right endpoint, I got this one. If I'm doing midpoint, it's not the average of these two. That would be the trapezoid method. I need to just take that height of that value in the middle. And so that's going to be my height, namely this one right here. And then if I draw the next one, I draw it over again. But look at this. This, this is the midpoint value. So I'm, I'm actually losing a lot of area there. However, it's the method that I'm using at that particular moment. And then what's going to happen in this last interval? Well, my height's going to go up to this one right here. Okay? And so this is the area that's going to estimate our inner goal. This is the midpoint method. Let me show you how to do it with the numbers. So if I have this over here with the numbers, uh, I can take, since this is always 3, I can take that 3 and factor it out. Now what happens is that I look at n equal to 3 and I draw these rectangles. And inside that interval, I need a height. Which height am I going to use? Am I going to average these two or use this one? Midpoint method tells me to use this one. So this would be 12. In this interval, what's the midpoint? Well, there it is. It's 8. In this interval, what's the midpoint? It's 24. So that would be my estimate for the area under the curve, 
which we represented with 0, now it can't be 15, it's got to be 18, of V of T dt. This is what we are estimating. This is the midpoint method using those values. Okay, now what if I use the trapezoid method and do that with n equal to 6 where I have equal intervals. There's a shortcut formula that you can use. There's a delta x divided by 2, which is also equal to, you'll see it like this, b minus a all over n, where n is how many intervals I'm splitting it up into, and then the 2 is there. Where does this 2 come from? Well, that 2 comes from the averaging. Remember, before we average these two. So what we can do then is we can determine that, well, first of all, this is n equal to 6. My interval length is 18 minus 0, and I'm going to divide that by 6. So I'm going to get a width of 3. So I'm going to take 3 and divide it by 2, because I need to average. And so I'm going to count one of these, and I'm going to count two of these, and two of the 18s, and two of the 8s, I believe that's an 8, and two of the 20s, and two of the 24s, and one of the last 22s. This would be the trapezoid method. You can also average the left and right endpoint methods. And then you also can do it like we did before. You can take these two and average them. So I'm going to take 3 and multiply it by 12 plus 6, which is 16, divided by 2, which is my 8. So I wrote these all out. So I got the 15 by averaging 12 and 18. I got the 13 from averaging these and so on. Now why can these be equivalent? Well, what's happening is that this 4, for instance here, I got it written once, right? And so this 4 overall, I use it once. But now if I go down to this formula, I'm averaging these two. Then I average these two. Well, how many times did I use that 12? Well, I used it twice. So when I use it twice, what I'm doing is I'm taking and dividing by 2. These I already divided by 2 when I put them together. I'm not doing a super job explaining it here, but um, you've probably gone through that before. I'm just trying to show some of the methods. I can maybe show it with, here are my trapezoids uh, drawn. So if I want to find the area of this first one, what I do is I take this value here, which is the 4, and this value here, and I average them. That will give me the area multiplied by the width. I, that gives me the area of this piece. So I've counted this one, and I've counted this one. Now I go to the next one. I take this one, and this one, I average them. Oh, so I take that one and this one, and I average them and then multiply by the width. And so then the next one, I take this one and this one. Then the next one, I take this one and this one. I think you can see what's going on. So what happens is that when I get to the end here, I take this and this and average them. So each of these n values I've counted once. Each of the other stuff in the middle, I've counted twice. That's where our formula kind of comes from when we do it this way, okay? So we, I'm sorry, this one. So we count this one once, count this one once, and everything else twice. So it's a formula that's created. This is our averager. Okay? So each of those should be the same. And sure enough, when I put these into my calculator, I get exactly the same value. You should have an intuitive view of this, though, but this is just a refresher, so you should pick up on this very quickly. All right, thank you very much. This is a review of Riemann sums and the trapezoid method.